This is a demonstration of using absolute and relative addressing in Excel. Uh, in Excel, when you want to multiply two columns, add two columns, or do any kind of operation on adjoining columns, all you have to do is do the calculation once. Like for instance, here, I want to calculate subtotal for the cost of 50 of an item that costs $11.95. I can just click into this box next to my quantity column and my unit cost cost column and type in equal sign 50, which is an A2, times 11.95, which is an B2. That's going to calculate that product. Okay, 597.50. Okay, so now at this stage, what I can do is rather than have to repeat this calculation for each adjoining cell, 25 times 25.5, I can ask Excel to automatically copy that formula down for me. So there's a number of ways I can do that. One is to click in here and drag down until I get to the last row. And I can go up here to fill. On PC, it's on the opposite side to the right over here. But click on fill and say fill down. And Excel copies that formula down for me. For instance, right here, if I click into this box, instead of A2 times B2, as it was here in the first box that I typed in, it's now A3 times B3, and A4 times A, uh, B4, and A5 times B5. So it's copied the formula down for me rather than the actual number. Okay, very handy. Okay, another way that I could copy down is I can click in the first box, drag down, go up to the edit menu, and say fill down. It does exactly the same thing. It looks the same because it did, it did the calculation again, or copied the formula again, uh, but since I already did it the first time, there's no changes. The third way I can do this is to click into the first box alone and then go over here to the very corner of the box and just hover over it until I get that little skinny plus sign. Click down, drag, and it copies the formula down just as before. And any one of those three methods will work. Okay, now let's take a look at this third column. Okay, and if I click into this third column, now let's say I want to calculate tax for each one of these subtotals, 597, 597.50 times the tax rate. So the tax rate is 8 and 3 quarters percent, 0 0.0875. So to calculate that, I would click in here, click equals, I would click this cell, which is C2. I'd multiply it by the tax rate times, well, I'm going to, I would tax rate is down in this cell B12, right? And I hit enter. Okay, so the tax rate on $597 is $52. Okay, so now I want to repeat this for each one of these other rows. So if I want to repeat it for each one of these other rows, I'm going to click here. I'll use the last method. I'm going to go over here to hover, and it turns into a plus sign. And I'm going to drag that formula down all the way down to here. And I see I got a problem here. Something went wrong. Okay, so what went wrong here is that if I click into this box, sure enough, it's the C2 times B12 that I expected it to be that I typed in. But the next box, instead of being C C3 times B12, which is what I intended, it's now C3 times B13. And the next one is C3 times B14. And the next one is C3 times B15. Excel is continuing to advance the number I'm multiplying by down row by row, just as it did with, with side by side column, even though that's not really what I need. Okay, so what I can do here is like if I had started here, I'm going to go back and click in here. If I had told Excel, I want to be able to tell Excel that the each one of these rows, this calculation for tax in these rows, is going to be whatever's in the adjoining cell times what's in B12. So I don't want B12 to change. So to make sure B12 doesn't change, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of it, in front of the B, and in front of the 12. So technically, it's telling it, don't change the B, and don't change the 12. I'm going to hit Enter. It doesn't affect this one at all, because this one's still B, B, uh, C2 times B12. Right, but now let's see if it has any effect on the rest of the rows. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm clicking here. I'm going to go over here to 
until it turns into a narrow plus sign or use the fill down. Click, drag down, and sure enough, it does the correct calculation for each one of these quantities. If I click in here, you'll see it's C7 times B12. This one is C9 times B12. This kind of addressing is called absolute addressing, okay, because it's absolute because the B12 part of it is going to stay the same all the time. This kind of address, whoops, I hit escape to make sure I don't change anything there. This kind of addressing is called relative addressing because as I drag down and ask it to copy the formula to the downwards or to the right or left or whatever, it's going to change the relative address to match what row it's in or what column it's in if I'm going across. Okay, so that's the way we want to do it. Now, if I want to calculate the total cost, which is the subtotal plus the tax, let's see, I'm going to put this area equals, it's 597 plus the tax. Okay, well, in this case, I'm going to click in here, and since I'm going to do this for each row and I want it to advance, I'm going to use relative addressing. I'm not going to use that dollar sign. So I'm going to click in here, drag down, and sure enough, it does the calculation properly for me. Okay, and each row advances uh, as, it, as it goes down. This is C6 plus D6 and so on. Okay, so that's the idea of relative versus absolute addressing in Excel.